when interpreting, pay attention to. So what I'm going to give you first is a positive list, some good things to pay attention to, and then sort of like a negative list, some things you have to be very careful for. And I'm going to give you some examples. Okay, what do you see? What's the first thing? Okay, why is the title important? Yeah, otherwise, it's like this could be about anything, right? You've got lots of numbers, you've got lots of trends, but what is this actually explaining to you, okay? Um, secondly, and we don't have to put the whole thing there, but you can see there's the, after the title, there's like the vertical part which measures something and the horizontal part which measures something. What's our name for that? It starts with an A. You can see it there. The, the axes, very good. So the axes, they ought to be labeled, again, just like the title, to describe what is going on. Number three is really tricky. Number three says, what's the word? Scale. scale. So when you hear the word scale, what does that mean to you? If you could come up with, like some person has never met the word scale before, and how would you explain it, Anush? Um, like how much the numbers should go up by. Very good. How much the numbers should go up by on every part as you go up the graph, and also to the right as you increase or decrease as it goes by. Um, I'm going to leave the other three that are there. They're things for you to continue thinking about. Now, as you note these, I want to point out some examples of where you have to be careful. Okay, I've got some pictures and we're going to have a think about them together. So here's one. Now, here's a graph. It's got some things that are useful and it's got some things that are not so useful. What's the title? Vote line. Vote line. There it is in big. So you know this is something to do with voting, you know, a political sort of thing, right? Okay, now some of you are smiling because you've realized, wait, wait a second, okay? Uh, I guess sort of a sub-question, uh, subtitle rather, is today's question. It says, do you like the plan to remove a car lane of the... Actually, no, I'll take that back. It's this one. This is... Um, Oh, is it? Uh, I'm not sure. It's, this is the result, right. Now, just have a look at the graph for a minute. Have a look at it. What's wrong with this graph? Because <laughs> there's like kind of something really big wrong with this graph. Merrick, what are you seeing? The opposite, because the bigger number should we um, have more? Right. Now, we're so wired. We see yes as green, right? And then you see this green thing over here. You're like, oh, those are the same which I think they are intended to be the same. And then you see red, that's no, and then this other red thing. But the numbers are completely backwards, aren't they, right? Now, when you're flicking through a newspaper, the last time you picked up a newspaper, or if you're like flicking through a social media feed or something like that, right? How closely do you think you have a look at these little details? No. Probably not very at all. You're just kind of skimming past, right? So these are really tricky. And in fact, these come up. I would have shown you more examples, but then we would spend the whole lesson just looking at examples of this. Okay? Have a look at this for a second. This is from um, this is from the UK. This is from the UK. Have a look at it, right? Last week we asked whether A levels. These are like advanced exams in the UK. Whether they're becoming harder to pass. And you said, well, apparently, <laughs> number one, fifty percent said yes. Forty-nine percent said no. Where's the 1%? Where's the 1%? There's another question. Okay, so we're missing some people. And then the other problem is the same thing we observed in the previous chart. What's the other problem? 50% Yeah, it's, it's smaller. Uh, it's not even close to what should be half, right? Okay, so you can see what we're looking at is examples of misleading graphs or statistics. Let's have a look at this one. Uh, this one you have to think a little more carefully about these things I asked you to pay attention to. Look closely. Have a look at our list. We only wrote down three things. What's the first thing that's missing? Title. There's no title. So you kind of have to, which is part of why you're staring at it thinking, wait, what does this mean? Okay. Now, for those of you who haven't encountered the word fiscal before, this is about money. It's like financial details, that kind of thing. You have to kind of turn your head sideways a little bit. And there are some acronyms that you and I both don't know what they stand for. What's an RPG? Is it rocket propelled grenade? What's going on? Role playing game? I don't know. Okay. But there's one other really, really big problem that's the actual main thing that is misleading about this. Not that there's a title, not that there's a term that you don't know what it is. Even if you knew what it was, there's another problem. What do you see, Vishaka? The axes. The axes. What's up with the axes? The numbers. <laughs> the numbers. Okay, so that's helpful. We know the numbers. There's something up with those. Can someone, yeah, Anush, what do you see? Different. There's two different types of numbers. Ah, okay. So when you say two different, right? I see numbers down here. What are these? These are years, okay? So that's fine. Time is progressing, right? There's two different numbers or kinds of numbers on the vertical scale, right? Here and here. Two different scales. Now, before you all say, wait a second, that's ridiculous, right? I'm going to point out, people do this 
all the time. Okay, this is actually a very common way of representing data and it's the idea of we're trying to be efficient, we're trying to show you two things that we want to compare and so we show you them intentionally with two different scales. But there's a bigger problem, right? When you've got these different scales, when you look at, just ignore the scales for a minute, look at the blue and the red graphs, just look at those lines. They look like they're pretty like competing on a fair sort of level ground, right? Like they're sort of in between each other, sort of one takes the lead and then the other one takes the lead and it sort of seems like a fair fight, right? Now have a look more closely. The blue line follows one scale and the red line follows another one. Which one is which? Which one is which? Ah, so it's, it sort of disguises you a little bit, right? The blue one says non-competing. So then you have to look and say, well, which scale is that? I think that's this one here. Do you see that? Okay. So in other words, the blue lines, they range from 2,650 up to 3,050. That's the blue lines. They're all going on this scale. Then the red lines are 750 to 1,150. So in other words, the highest of the red numbers is less than half of the lowest of the blue numbers. Does that make sense? If you could redraw this graph and it actually had the same scale on both, then very, very roughly, ooh, where'd my red go? It's disappeared. Here it is. If we could draw these, because those red numbers are all so much lower, right? You're gonna have actually your red numbers down here, and then your blue numbers, where are they gonna be? Way up. Way up. They're gonna be all, there's not even a competition between these things, right? And there's one other thing, and I didn't put it on here, but it is on your list there. I think it might be number four. Is it number four? It is, it is. Number four, I keep on misplacing my markers, um, is the origin, origin? Four. Origin. What does that mean? It's like the zero, zero. Very good. It's where does this graph begin? And you can see, see how these numbers, they go wildly up and down. They sort of vary very highly. But part of the reason why is because actually the variation is all between these numbers. If we started from zero, these, these numbers would only wiggle about just a little bit. Okay. All right. One last one just to show you and then you're going to have a go at these yourself. So this is a different kind of tricky misleading graph. Uh, does it have a title? It does, just barely. Trash. Trash, okay. So at least it tells us what it's about. Uh, does it have a helpful scale? Is there anything confusing about the scale? Kind of. I, I think... Uh, interesting. Okay, so for starters, at least we don't have two scales to worry about. Um, the origin you can see. Are there any issues with the origin? It starts at zero, that's helpful, okay? And just like in the previous graph, we've got time passing down the bottom. The issue is not to do with scale, it's not to do with the origin, it's not to do with the time. What is the issue? What do you reckon, Barabi? So we've all kind of inferred that this is time because of the numbers, but you're like, 150? 150 what? 150... Uh, it bins, 150 tons, 150, who knows, right? So there's the first issue, no axes that are labeled, that's why we pay attention to it. What else, Anush? The, the pictures aren't even showing up with the, with the horizontal axes. Yeah, very good. These pictures, right? These pictures are two-dimensional, aren't they? Right? They grow in size horizontally and vertically. But this vertical, these horizontal lines across here, they're all about these values. And so see this, how much bigger, how much bigger does this trash can look? compared to this one. Like huge, right? Yeah, I'd say eight to ten times bigger. Now have a look at the vertical scale. How much bigger is it actually than the first one? What do you see, Haley? It's like bigger by 150. Bigger by 150. So this one's 100, right? This one's bigger by 150, so a little bit over double. But that does not look double the size of this. As we said before, I think you could fit eight or ten of these in here. So that's misleading in a different way. And just like the very first graph, as you're sort of just scanning on through, our eyes tweak to this and we get tricked if we're not paying close attention. Does this make sense?